the time has come. I had to write a unit test. I'm not very happy about it, but I did want to take the opportunity to talk a bit about my testing philosophy, what I think people are missing when I talk about why I don't usually unit test, and how I think you should responsibly apply unit testing and testing philosophy to the applications that you build. So to get started, why am I writing a test? You might know my perspective from other videos. Generally, I don't find testing to be a solution to many of the problems I and my users run into. I am much more focused on making it easier for us to fix mistakes when they happen, not catch them by by putting way more work in at the start. My philosophy has always been build safety nets, not guardrails. Make it easier to get back up when you're caught. But guardrails do have value, and there are many places where they make sense. And one of those places is when the things that can catch you aren't able to. And another is when the things that you rely on to stay afoot aren't doing what they're supposed to. The thing that has had the most impact on my testing philosophy by far is TypeScript. Most of the unit tests I used to write were vaguely tests of things that TypeScript guarantees won't happen. Making sure you're not passing the wrong value to a function, making sure when the function has the wrong value that it handles it gracefully, all of those types of things. These types of problems become exponentially less likely when you use something like TypeScript to prevent those errors. As such, I have found way less need for doing testing in a lot of what I build. But there is an exception here when your TypeScript's role is something else. Since we're working more on library code, things you can PNPM install, we need to worry about how that behaves with your application. And we're deeply thinking about the contract our type system gives you when that happens. And as such, our type system has to lie a bit more than usual. I always hate that. I always hate casting any's and overriding types and to Go back to another thing. This is why I don't like return types very much. And sure enough, we had to do some return types here too. The reason we're using all of these things is we have a very specific problem we wanna solve, which is making it easier for users to upload files. But the complexity of the contract between the user's code and ours is such that the type system's role is different. Types aren't preventing us as the library devs from making mistakes. They are the way you, the user of our library, uses it, which means we don't have the same role of the type system in our code base. The type system can't just prevent me from making a dumb mistake anymore. And in order for us to make it easier for users to not have those dumb mistakes, we have to put a lot of time into thinking through that contract. And more importantly, we need to put a lot of effort into making sure we don't break it. For better or worse, this is where the tests come in. The best tests are the ones that depend deeply on the context of the problem that they are testing. Tests should be very contextual. And in most contexts, if there's an option to make things simpler, you should make things simpler. I find the majority of the tests I see aren't testing something that has to be complex. They're testing something that happens to be complex. And rather than making it simpler, they're testing behavior that it already has. It's kind of like taking a, a house that's falling apart, and rather than rebuilding the parts that are falling apart, you cover it in concrete so that it can't fall apart any further. Like, yeah, sure, that works. My concern is a lot of the testing tastes I see are used to justify covering piles of crap in concrete. And if that's how your tests feel, if they feel like you are taking this thing that's falling apart and documenting all of the edges of it, tests are actually preventing you from fixing problems. And I see this a lot too. When people are learning how to do unit testing, they're doing that without the context necessary to make good tests. And as such, if you take the lessons that you would get from any quick, like how to unit test video and apply those to your code base, there's a very good chance you're applying that in places that doesn't actually help make your code base better and might actually be putting some concrete on some fragile stuff. Tests make it much less likely that you're going to change the code underneath them, which can be good if you never want the code to change, but it's probably bad because most code should eventually change. And this is why I hate testing more than anything. People are scared to make changes when they shouldn't necessarily be. Yes, this can go the other way where if code isn't tested, people are scared because it could fall apart. But there's a balance here that you need to find where you're empowering developers to make changes and be more successful and move faster. And if your tests are preventing fast movement, which sadly almost all tests are, they are now also hurting your ability to fix things when they go wrong. Finding this balance is tough. And this is why I took the far extreme I took, which is add tests when they solve problems that only tests can solve. And in the history of ping, code base that we've been working on for over two years now and had thousands upon thousands of users using it almost every day. We've had dozens of production bugs that we've had to fix. We usually have them fixed pretty quick, on average under seven minutes. But more importantly, of those bugs, we have had three total that a unit test may have caught if we were strict about our testing rules. Dozens of bugs, probably over a hundred at this point, and we have counted three that a unit test may have prevented. That isn't worth it. It just isn't for many, many applications. And usually when I find a heavily tested code base, it's not tested because the code is good. It's tested because the code is shit. And if you're using tests as a way to keep your shit code in the exact shit state, sure. But I don't think those people watch my videos. <laughs> I think we're here because we love coding and building and trying new things and making stuff better. And that's why I push the unit testing takes I push because I want my teams energized building code that they understand and are excited by. And if they could spend two hours writing tests or they could spend a day 
rewriting the code that they were testing to make it simpler and easier to understand. I will almost always pick the extra day of time spent. The exception, as always, is library code. The same way TypeScript makes things easier until you're building a library, tests probably aren't necessary in TypeScript until you're building a library. Libraries just have so many edges and so many ways their understandings are misused. And defining the API such that a TypeScript contract can communicate it and that the behaviors do what you expect is a tough balance. And testing is a nice way to find that balance. It is not like our tests are super complex. Let me quickly pull them up. Sorry for sharing this code, Mark. I'm sure you'll forgive me. So we're working on file thing. Fuck it, I'll, I'll leak the new syntax. So here's the file thing syntax. You can create a file router using the file thing helper. You define what it can take. You give it a max size. You give it a middleware that either returns some metadata if it passes, or you throw if you don't want the user to be able to upload. So you use the request to figure out if this is the user you want, do whatever you want in here. And then you know by the time it gets here that this user is allowed to upload. And now this info is tagged on the request. And on upload complete is the code that runs when this upload's completed on your server. And it it runs with whatever you return here. This makes the typing a little complex because we need to take the return of whatever this middleware async function that might not even be async returns and then use that as the metadata type here. We couldn't use TypeScript the traditional way here. In fact, this problem was hard enough when I did it as an object that I showed it to my Discord and Trash lost a lot of his sanity trying to explore it. The problem here was if you remove request from this, the type here breaks. But if you leave request here, somehow the inference works properly. Actual insanity. Yeah. <laughs> We entirely changed the pattern for building with our library because of TypeScript's behavior here. And quickly we ended up in type hell where we have like 17 types for three values. As such, this is not easy code to, to maintain. And that's fine because that's our job to maintain so y'all can consume it and have this incredible experience uploading files. More coming soon on that. And as such, we had to write tests. And when I say we, I should be specific. Julius had to write tests for us. Thank you, Julius. We still owe you money for this. And in here, we're using vtest, which has this incredibly useful expect type of. Very, very handy. And now we have some basic tests where we make sure invalid file types are erroring. And if we return something that isn't an object, we get an error. And then if we return a middleware with a thing on it that we have the right types or don't specifically have these types. And then there's a basic smoke test down here that's just like do the thing and make sure stuff exists. Very, very simple. Very, very good. And honestly, before we had these tests, what I was doing is writing out pretty much exactly this without the expects. And I had it in the file I was defining everything in at the bottom with a bunch of uh, shiki two slash comments pointing at the different type definitions so I can make sure as I made changes, the types were correcting themselves. Having this in a unit testing file just makes more sense because the unit here is inherently complex. So yeah, I now have tests and I'm maintaining them, making changes to them and relying on them as a guardrail, keeping me from making big mistakes because the safety net isn't good enough here. And we've thrown away my favorite safety net TypeScript because we're choosing to use that one as a contract between our users instead of using it as a safety net for ourselves. I think that's all I have to say about this. Hope this was handy. Unit tests can be valuable. I just think we're way, way, way overusing them. As soon as you're in the land of code coverage rules, you've lost the plot. The goal of this is to show you one of the examples of the rare times, like the only time in the last three years rare that I found a unit test helpful. If you want to hear me complaining more about unit tests, video about that right there. Thank you guys as always. Sirens going off.